Good evening, students. I hope you are doing fine today. Hello. Good evening. Hello. We'll get started in a few minutes. Uh, is video gone is video coming hello is the video coming uh back oh no i was i was not speaking i was silent for silent for some time maybe there was some kind of problem with the video but now it should be fine uh okay so we'll wait for two more minutes before it was there a ta session today was there a ta session today okay uh, no gauri says no there was for some people it was there and some people it was not there thanks for letting me know that we had how how is weather there uh, uh how's weather is good weather is good in uh hyderabad it's pleasant it's very pleasant okay students it's not like this um, here in delhi it's cold yeah i know delhi is delhi is a little cold that is true let's get down to business uh So you know something about Node.js, do you? 
we have discussed node.js at various places node.js as a compiler for javascript compiler for js uh, and basically whenever you want to compile javascript outside uh, outside an environment uh, outside a web browser we can use node.js we have also discussed something called as mongodb what is mongodb can somebody tell me what do you think is mongodb at this point every one of you should have the answer for this it's a NoSQL database. SQL DB. Okay, so, so far so good. We know how to work on any given, any given data point or any given, we, we know how to write algorithms and programs that can run on Node.js. So we know how to write these programs. And we also know how to interact with MongoDB from uh mongoose from mongoose we know how to deal with mongodb but we need some way of these programs to interact with mongodb we are not going to do all the data entry by our hands we are going to use some program for dealing for inserting data uh inserting data into mongodb so Mongo shell is for writing directly to, uh, to the data. But what you can have is a program <coughs> that sits between the program you are writing and MongoDB itself. And that program is called as Mongoose. It's a library. Let me write it in a few words. Library, yes, Vivek. Uh, Vivek, did you join a little late today? Hello? Uh, were you there from the starting? We are today talking about Mongoose, a library that can help you write data into your database. Oh, so did you talk to the backend team? What were they saying? Did you talk to the backend team or the... Uh, They're not helping you. Oh. I I'll give you analogy in a few minutes. Okay. Let me check. Uh, just give me one second. Let me drop a message to somebody I know in the team. Let let me hope that will help. Just give me a few seconds, students. This is important. Oh. team uh maybe they will have no no i i didn't i didn't switch off my video 
so if i stop talking do you think that i have switched off the video or what is what is the problem that is happening i don't understand hello if i go out of this if i click somewhere else oh if i click somewhere else let me see uh, so if i click here is the video gone right now hello okay it's not gone no it's not gone uh, oh if i don't click then i, I don't know uh, this is a new setup that i have this video camera is better than my previous video camera uh, this video camera is better than my previous video camera that might be the problem because it is uh, it it gives 4k video so sometimes uh, maybe the uh, maybe 4k is causing some problem i don't know uh, i don't see any uh, yeah i don't see any reason for this to cause any problem but i don't know uh, i'm connected to a fast uh, audio is also gone audio must be there now okay okay anyways just hang on with it i'll install some more softwares and it will it should work well okay anyways as far as it is good we are good so uh, vivek today we are discussing about mongoose mongoose is a library to connect your node program a program that is running on node with your mongodb you can connect a program which is running on uh, which, which is running on node js you compile it on node js and it can insert or update or re, uh, search values in your database that is what mongoose is does that make sense do you understand why that will be helpful if you understand the need for the software then we can discuss how you can use it but if you don't understand the need for the software then it's very difficult uh, so for example when i talk about hammer anyone can use hammer if they know what it is used for but if somebody tries to open a screw using a hammer they are they are no they are going to face issues they are going to face problems so mongoose is a tool that can connect your program to mongodb sequelize yeah it's it's you can think of it as an abstraction of mongodb but i would rather call it as an api for mongodb ekta yeah it is like a intermediary between mongodb and your code okay why we are using it what does it do specifically i'll discuss specifics in few minutes basically all the operations vishal that you have done before on a shell uh, mongo shell that all the operation that you have done on mongo shell sequelize what is sequelize it's like sequelize okay maybe there is a oh sequelize is a, uh, a library for sequel yeah okay yeah it's similar to that uh okay uh sir mongoose are used any type of driver yeah they can be used on any type of driver that's not a problem yeah sequelize is uh yeah similar to sequelize there are different tools for a specific purposes for the database and whenever there is a new tool uh, all you need to do is just go to chat gpt and say tell me more about this tool and it will give you a write up of 200 words that's going to be everything you need to know to get started on the tool the yeah, syntax is simpler uh, there are a few parts to the syntax which i am going to come to in few minutes but let me discuss how you go about working with mongoose uh, there are a few steps and if you understand those steps i, I mean these are basically if, if you are developing mongoose or if you are using a soft if even if you have never heard about mongoose you should be able to figure out or you should have a intuition about how mongoose will generally work 
okay so uh, let's let's play a small game let's try to guess what a software what a software to connect with mongoos uh, with mongodb should do and that is probably what the people who have written because the people who have written these software are uh, are very smart people they are they are very smart so you can just trust that whatever is the most common sensical way of creating this software uh, uh, they would have used the most common sensical way suppose you want to use mongoose what will be the first step the first step one will be to install mongoose okay install mongoose that will be step number one all of you could have guessed this if you are going to use the software you at least need to install it step number two import it into your file import mongoose to your file okay step 3 connect yes connect to mongodb that's the next step mongodb so mongodb is running on a port on your computer it is like a place where you can communicate with mongodb just like mongo campus compass communicates with mongodb on local host uh, something 27017 similarly you need to connect your mongoose to that url does that make sense are these three steps making sense to you very simple and these three hours should be enough to learn everything about mongoose there should not be any thing after these three hours that you need to do about mongoose okay i mean you should not have to google anything you can directly go to the documentation after this talk and find out what you are looking for so don't google anything after this talk always go to the documentation and learn from there so anyways connect to mongodb and once you have connected to mongodb step 4 is uh define a data model so there are two steps in step 4 first is to define a data model data model is nothing but synonymous to collection it's a collection whenever you want to create a collection you create a data model similar to it okay does that make sense if you want to use a user collection you will have a user data model if you want to use if you want to have a student collection you will have a student data model simple define a data model once you have defined a data model you can basically uh, you can basically start inserting it so there are two steps yeah it will get connected to controller that is true sir create a model which type of on uh, orm are used uh, it you can directly create a model once you import uh, mongoose uh, you can create a model directly by calling an api okay so all you need to do is uh mongoose new mongoose dot student uh no what is what is a code for that just give me one second there's a simple code for that uh, which is mongoose dot model when you once you do something like no new mongoose dot model you have to pass some parameters and that creates a model for you okay sir a model which type of orm we are used yeah that directly you can use the api then it will get connected to controllers yes that is true perform crud that is true 
uh, after this, all you can do is perform CRUD. But there is one thing that is special about this. When you define a data model, there is an option to define a schema. And it is highly recommended whenever you define a data model in Mongoose to define a schema for that data model. Okay. And then you can uh, do CRUD on that data model. So those are the those were mostly the options. Okay, Suraj lost his net. Suraj, what you need to do is there is a there's something called as mongoose.model, which is similar to collections. It is a type of data that you are going to save in in your database. So you define that type using new mongoose.model, and then uh then you can save and insert, you can insert, delete, and uh find things in your in your database afterwards. So that's those were the five steps that you generally want to do. So define a schema can elaborate more. Yes, I will elaborate. Do you, do you remember schemas schemas I was defining before when I was talking about in, it in one of the lectures? It was the second lecture on MongoDB. It, after the intro, I defined a lot of schemas, Gauri. You remember that lecture? Yeah, in Mongoose. Yeah, I define how uh, how to do it in MongoDB. In Mongo shell, I defined it. And then what you are going to do, you are going to do similar schema design in Mongo Mongoose. Mongoose can also define a schema. There's a uh, there's a API which is new mongoose.schema, and you can define a schema. What is the difference between data model and database? Database is a place where you store a lot of data and data model is kind of kind of an abstraction of data like your data will look like this it's like an api data model you can think of data model as an api and database as something that stores the data okay so for example mongoose is a data uh, mongoose mongodb is a database whereas mongoose provides you with a data model Data model, you can call functions on top of it. You can call it from your uh, your program. Does that make sense, Nair? Yeah. How to do in data model? I'll explain that. Gauri, I'll come to that as I as I, I, I'm going to spend all today's lecture on these five steps only. One step at a time, we are going to spend more and more time. And most of the time will go into this step of defining a schema. There is a uh, you have to define, for example, if I'm defining a user scheme, user data model, I'll have to pass the user schema as a parameter. First, I have to define the user schema and then pass it along. S syntax of a schema will be very similar. Uh, Vivek, uh, schema, do you remember the second lecture that I took where I was talking about uh, you can have schemas about your data? about your collection, how the uh, documents in your collection should look like. Similarly, in Mongoose, you can define how the objects in your data model will look like so that uh, so that you are not putting garbage values into your database. So you can define a schema like that. OK. Any other questions? If there are no more questions, why don't we start doing these steps together? Uh, maybe I'll start sharing my screen, but first you'll have to give me some time to open the folder. Once I open the folder, I'll start sharing the screen. Um,
sir so basically make code which connect to mongodb and create data model that is and then uh, interact with that data model nilanjan you, you can also interact with the data model you are you almost got it correct but you just have, you just forgot the uh, the basic reason why we are doing it all we are doing all this uh, all this hard work so that we can talk to our data okay sir i i'll ask later uh, what what do you want to i have one no 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 ekta please ask please ask sorry i didn't read your question sometimes if there is no question mark in front i i subconsciously forget about the question yeah you can please come on your mic you are most welcome please come on your mic hello sir am i audible yes ekta you are audible yes, yes. so i had this confusion like uh, in the previous uh, module we used sqlize that was an orm for sql yes. it, it was kind of an abstraction as i mentioned earlier so yeah. can we say that mongoose is doing uh, like kind of similar to what yeah. sql is uh, sqlize is doing yeah yeah so you, can you know like you know sometimes i get confusion and sometimes i'm like kind of scared that uh, like if in an interview if i get asked this question so what if i like you know just mess up the definition so can we say like it is uh, uh, just used to co connect our node js to mongodb as you mentioned so we we we'll yeah. write yeah so we we'll write our uh, like code in javascript using mongo so is nothing is it like similar to sqlize orm Just give, me one second. Just, just give me one second. yes ekta let me let now and now understand what sql wise is sorry i was not aware of I, i guessed about it but i was not totally aware about sql wise so now let's talk about it okay 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 so just just wanted to clear this out that uh, uh, yeah, yeah. it's my understanding uh, clear yeah yeah so so yeah I, i'll try to try to tell try to make the whole thing clear to you and i think this is a very important topic so uh, so i'll just create this and Uh, C lies and mongoose. Okay, so uh, let's say you are designing. So you understand the basic concept is correct. Okay, C lies is used to connect. Uh, so let me write it properly first. C Q U E L I Z D. C lies is there to connect Node.js. Node.js to My SQL. My SQL. PostgreSQL, Oracle, etc. Yeah. And Node.js is there to connect. No, oh, sorry, Mongoose. Mongoose is there to connect Node.js with MongoDB. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, even if you don't know about SQLize, suppose you don't know about SQLize and Mongoose, hmm. 
and somebody ask you a question what is the difference between the two only thing you know is that it is there for connecting this to this and this is there for connecting node js to mongodb yes first thing you should say is since mongodb is a document database mm -hmm. okay uh, the model that you are going to create here is not going to be object relational here you are creating object relational model yes yes okay yes sir. relational model so what happens is uh, you have a bunch of table each table is an entity and whatever you want right. to insert into that table is goes through that entity <laughs> okay uh, here in mongoose you use something called as object document model okay yes sir. because this is a document database now here uh, similar to tables you have collections and every collection is a model that you want here every relation is a model here every document every collection is a model okay yes sir. one major difference between sqlize and mongoose is sqlize has support for joins hmm. okay support for joins so what you can do in sqlize is if you have two tables you can write a, a both of them are entities you can get some kind of uh, some kind of join between the two tables okay yes but uh, this does not have native support for joins because not joins are not joins are the reason why we are moving to mongodb so native support is not there okay mm -hmm. you can circumvent the thing but you don't get it off the shelf okay. but basically here everything is independent like each and every document is just a uh, like yeah. uh, how do i put it Yeah, some, each some and every document is like a, like a file that you save somewhere. Fine, exactly so. So now what happens is you all this object related object document model does this. It it uh, what do you say? It uh, uni you it makes the documents uniform across the shelf. All the documents will be similar if they go through mongoose. They they will have some kind of a schema test to them. Yes, sir. like validators we used in like, like validate exactly. They will have a schema validation okay. a step involved. Whereas in object relational model, uh, that schema comes from SQL itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, sir. I understand. Yeah. Actually, the problem was I have used your mongoose a few times yeah. without you know particularly understanding like okay it is some I just had an idea that it is some sort of abstraction over MongoDB but. What was exactly uh, its uh, you know its function? So uh, now I understood. So like yeah. clearly. Yeah. So so how how do you go about uh, using something without understanding it? Like no. Uh, so like I did like it is some sort of I just correlated SQLite and Mongoose, but okay. this object document model it was like this term here. It yeah. It was uh, some sort of like. Like I was not that blank, but I still yeah, needed yeah, yeah. a very thorough so, understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That is true. If you just think about it a little, you will get it. But uh, so, for example, I I didn't know about SQLite, but as soon as I understood that it is for, and then I just Google, uh, I just did a small search on it, and I understood what is the difference. Okay. And now, if you ask me to use it, I can use it. I can also tell you what are the steps that are involved in doing SQLite. Okay. Uh, first, you will uh, uh, import it. Again, you will connect it to your PostgreSQL or MySQL connector. You will define your entities, and then you uh, you will start inserting or deleting from those entities. That's all you do in SQL. As I have not seen the documentation, but I am confident about those steps. Yes, here, so, mostly we have uh, commands. Uh, yeah. So yes. Uh, so that that would be the general way you can go about so if you know uh, 15 technologies you can have idea about much larger set of technologies from there okay mm -hmm. a good guess work can take you along yeah. okay. okay thank you so much sure. thank you so much sir have you heard about orm odm called prisma which can be used to connect to both sql and no sql database no or no energy uh uh i native support is when is for join means native support for join means uh, you can do joins you can have commands that can do join between entities in sqlize but uh but with mongoose it's difficult to do join between models models are different objects you, you have to retrieve objects and then do join on your own can you please disconnect from your end? oh yeah ekta I'll, i'll disconnect you sure okay so uh it's not trivial to do join so uh, the key point here is 
uh, it is not trivial to do joins in mongoose uh, you can do it but it's not that easy that's all that's what i mean by native support it is not built for it you can hammer a uh, screw but that is not what a screw is built for a screw is built to be driven by a screwdriver but if you want to hammer it you can obviously hammer it but that's you are going to fight against the tool okay yeah i'm sorry arnav i don't have heard about prisma uh, uh, but it's a good idea to just learn about it a little prisma okay it is not uh, sir uh, no is it it's, it's more clear sir sir shall we start now yeah i will start i will start okay uh, yeah i was just looking at prisma actually it, it took my attention so i just was looking about prisma uh, it hardly takes half an hour to master any of these tools once you know one of the tools it hardly takes half an hour to master the other tool you can work with all of them okay just understand why the tool is used and that is probably the reason why i spent like 15 20 minutes just talking about the intuition behind mongoose i have not written a single line of code but i just wanted to build an intuition about how to think about a new tool because you are going to ex even if i teach you everything about mongoose uh, what is the promise that in 6 months you will not be using another tool that you have not heard about okay so it's better to have a, have a idea about how to learn about new tools and then you can work with them okay so that's uh that's the idea uh now i'm going to share my screen and hopefully i will be able to work properly yeah this is work okay so now i'm going to do the same thing i have been doing all along i'm going to create a new folder and that folder is five uh using mongoose mongoose and today's date is 19th of december 2022 and inside this folder i'm going to define a file uh i'm not going to define a file inside this folder so i'll just escape this first thing first um uh, you need to install the first step that i've talked about is okay i uh, maybe i can define a file and then take it so i'll just define a readme dot read a uh, readme dot md and in this file i'll define something called as steps to use mongoose i'm going to write the same steps so sorry for being repetitive but i think it will be helpful for those of you who want to take notes or those of you who just want to remember it So the first step is to install uh, install mongoose. Install mongoose. Uh, so you can install mongoose if you have Node. That is good. Second step is to connect connect to mongoose mongoose from program file. Okay, I'm going to write the code for this in few minutes. And the third step is. Oh, sorry. This is this is the third step. Second step is import mongoose module and connect to mongoose from program file. And then the fourth step would be uh, create create data model. This has two steps. Create data model is first. a uh, new mongoose mongoose dot schema you need to define a schema so uh, and then the second step would be new mongoose model these are the two steps of creating model notes help a lot to revise the whole class in half an hour <laughs> thank you sakib 
Sakir. Sir, can I get the link for out of this? Uh, Mahindra, do you have? Don't you have the access to the whole uh, repository? Have I not given you the repository uh, link? It is in the same repository, uh, CRM app repository. You can get it from my link uh, from my GitHub. Uh, yes, Hari Haran has a doubt. I'm going to come to that after writing this last line. Um, to CRUD operations on data model. Okay, I'm going to give uh, for the end time. I'm going to give you the link to my GitHub repo. Just give me one second. Uh, just give me one second. Let me paste it. And by the time I'm pasting it, let me look at. Oh, Hari Haran has given the link. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hari Haran. If I resolve it, what happens? Uh, let me stop sharing and see what happened to that resolved link. Okay, this is the link. Just search for Anshul Yadav 007 and your your thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you just search, just search for Anshul Yadav 007 and you will find this GitHub link. <laughs> <laughs> I was too young when I created my GitHub profile. Come on, guys. <laughs> People have made bigger mistakes in their youth. It's a very small mistake. <laughs> OK, so you can do CRUD operations on data model. And that's all the steps there are. So I'll go through each of these steps. And uh, I'll show you how, how all of them work. The first step is to install Mongoose. To install Mongoose, open the terminal. I just do control tick and it opens the terminal. I go to CD CRM app. CRM backend, no, CRM app. Okay, inside CRM app, I do no npm install Mongoose and save. If I do this, hopefully Mongo should install. No, I, I did something wrong. Just give me one second. I have to control C this. Come on, control C. Yes, I want to turn this. Uh, first of all, go to that. To today's class don't 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 corrupt the whole folder go to today's class and here do npm install that, that should not cause any problem but i'm just not sure so i think first we need npm in no you can do npm in it later that's not a problem uh, you can just install mongoose and it gets saved and then we can do npm in it a uh, four package looking to be Added three packages. Okay, mongoose are added. Now what you can do is npm in it, and that is going to define your. Uh, package name. Yeah, that is true. Package name. Sorry, you cannot no longer contain social. Okay, I'll just write using. Mongoose. Does this work? Version this description mm, teaching. I don't know what save does. Let me see. Uh, oh, I, I can do it from here itself. Just give me one second. I'll tell you whenever you are in doubt what a what a given command does. All you need. To, I'll I'll do that. Just give me one minute. I come to your question. Call it. teaching mongoose. And entry point date here yeah, that is true test command that is github repo that is keywords author okay okay yes and now your uh, package.json is created now you are asking what does save do to find out i will do something like this npm help okay so test install okay I'll, I'll do i'll do 
uh, I'll do install help. Okay. They have options like save, no save, save prod. What are these options doing? Okay, no npm help install. Save option adds package to disk dependency list, I guess. Okay, now install a package. What is the save option doing? Come on. Um, saves any specific packages into dependencies by default. Additionally, you can control where and how they will save to some additional flag. You can uh, you can define that they will be uh, okay. This saves that into default uh, is dependencies. That's what save is doing. If you remove it, then also it should work. Uh, there's no problem, so it's it's not needed. But it was written in the book, so I just wrote it but it's not needed. Uh, so I can see new module package in VS code, but after Mongoose install, I can I can't mine. Uh, yeah, save option as well. We, we shall do it now. Yes. You, you should also uh, continue with this. Okay. You should also work with me. I, sir, I can see node modules package in VS, your VS code, but after Mongo's install, I can't in mine. Where did you do the, where did you do the, uh, this command using uh, install Mongo save? What is command to save? This is the command. Uh, node npm install Mongo's in VS code term, that I know, but which folder did you do it, Nilanjan? Did you do it in the folder number five? No, do it in this folder, five, folder five, not in other folder. Go to this folder using five using mongoose and do it there. Then you will be able so, to see the modules. Okay, node modules. And use the save functionality. Yeah, you should create one. Can we do it with you? Yeah, you can do it with me. That is that is perfectly fine. Uh, that is the ideal way of doing these classes. Uh, okay, this is not the ideal way. Ideal way is I'll just give you these five points and I give you like half an hour to do all of them on your own. And that is the ideal way of teaching it. But it's very difficult to do it in online program. If you were in offline setting, I would have ideally done that. I would have given you half an hour and told you to learn and use mongoose on your own. And then I would have given a five minute lecture at the end, but I cannot do that. Because, and that is very helpful. If I can do that, I can teach you not just mongoose, but I can teach you how to learn any package in half an hour. Okay. Uh, sir, I have done now. Um, I have new mongoose. Okay. Do you have mongoose favorite? Yes. And install NPM install. Minus I, I'm not sure how to do it in a single uh, character. We can do mongoose install, npm install mongoose, this command here. You have to use this command. I think I will work, but you have to do dash afterwards. Let me see what was the code here. Uh, install is there, but uh, uh, I don't see it written anywhere, so I don't know. We did npm in it and npm I installed mongoose only. Yes, exactly, Arathir. Only these two things. First, I installed mongoose and then I did npm help. I, I did some help things, but I just did npm in it. Okay. Okay. If it works, it's good. So we have done the first step. Can I say that we have done the first step? Or should I wait for a few minutes for you to do it? Some of you might be having a slow internet. What is plus? Okay, this is. These are the packages. Oh. Baba. Npm minute. Yeah, just do npm minute. That's okay. Uh, that is going to define the packages. Okay. Uh, now, so I'm going to write those two lines here. So that those of you who have missed it can do it later. First line is 
npm install mongoose say and the second line is i'll give a space npm enter and what you need to do is uh, cd whatever is the folder name 5.5 using dot forward so you can do this and then you can do npm install mongols and then you can do npm very simple now once you have created this you need to you need to import mongols into a file and for this we are going to define a file called as index.js first of all let me delete this folder it is just troubling me this is outside outside the chapter 5 folder so i'm going to delete it okay and i'm going to delete this package log and package json all of them are something i'm going to delete yeah. i'm only interested in the current directory did i delete from this directory as well oh my god so i'm going to delete this also i'm going to do again let me delete this uh okay i'll start a fresh control this i thought it was in outside yes vivek patel has a doubt i'm going to come to your doubt in a second vivek let me just put my installation on yeah i'll install this let me see what is the doubt sir this error what is the error uh just answer doubt stop sharing um stop okay this error is probably coming because you are not connected you are not able to connect to node npm you are not able to connect to save save is yeah save is good i don't know what save is doing so but uh this is uh, this error is coming because you are not able to connect to node's repository vivek uh, there is some network issue on your computer that is causing dollar dollar is not dollar is not something he is putting dollar is coming from uh, the terminal itself vishal uh, so the dollar is not something that he is putting but what you need to do is you need to see how to connect to why is this connection not coming uh, are you getting some kind of uh, are you getting some kind of uh, uh, what is it called network access network access window coming up can you run this command uh no i'm not talking about command i'm talking about network access that there, there are some kind of panels that come when when you have to allow access to a program a very good current okay just give me one second let me search for this error unable to verify leave signature
can you try no no uh, i think when i change the window it turns me off i'm sorry when i change the window it turns me off i'm sorry for that uh, uh, but try this command vivek npm cache clean force first try this command and see if it is working afterwards okay and npm cache clean force what you are what you are happening is either uh, either there is some problem with your uh, config file of npm or there is some problem with your internet connection because mongoose is written correctly did you try this npm cache clean force vivek okay just once you are done with that just let me know no there there may be an administrator issue but uh yeah maybe you need to run the vs code using administrator rights i'm not sure uh but let's try with npm cache clean first check if there are any specific symbol okay uh yeah maybe try uh, so did it work vivek did it work after npm cache clean okay taking time but is it running are you getting error uh, how many lines of code still no or still it is not running okay uh no no uh, just give me one second maybe uh, last thing you can try is node npm update i think uh, maybe your npm is old npm update did you try npm update error what is the error you are getting with npm update vivek unable to verify leaf signature sir i search about save it was actually necessary to use it but before and this dependency not any returns yes yeah that that's what i also understand did that work for you ekta does that did that work in installing globally did that work the okay updated now can you run that npm install mongoose save i mean you don't need to write save but npm install mongoose this works this works can you confirm vivek Okay. Okay. Just I'm um, just curious if it works. Mm. Maybe that that's the other problem with your code. Uh, 
Oh, I'm just waiting for Vivek. And then once Vivek is done, we'll know how it is working. Taking time. Okay, it, it took time last time also. Maybe it is not going to work. Just let me check. Package. Folder package dot here. Okay, it's not working. Maybe you need to change your config file. Uh, your, your config file has this global thing. Uh, uh, this global is written like this. It should be written as location global. So uh, that's what you need to. Uh, so the best thing I can tell you right now, Vivek, is to just install NPM and install it again. Did you install it? The, when did you install NPM? Four months ago. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, anyways. Uh, can you use global? Uh, can you can you use the global global keyword there? Uh, global install. Can you can you try this? Uh, can you uh, Vivek? Can you try just la last thing? Uh, otherwise, I'll uh, uh, cover this. And uh, can you try this? npm install minus g mongoose. Can you try this, Vivek? Otherwise, I'll cover it in some other lecture. Problem is, I'm not in. Oh, is it using CMD command prompt? Command line prompt? Are you using command line prompt, Vivek? Okay. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, it looks like. Uh, no, I don't know what terminal you are using, so I cannot comment. But terminal, I, I know that uh, PowerShell is what you need to use. Vivek, can you s tell me whether it works? npm install minus g mongoose? So in VS code, what you need to do is you need to start this one. Uh, in VS code, when I run commands, I I have these all options to use. There is Ubuntu, WSL, WSL Linux, there is terminal. That is, the, that is also, you use bash, git bash. Okay, maybe you can use PowerShell, but but that that's for some other time. Can did that run? Did global doing it globally run for you, Vivek? I wish I was on your computer right now. Okay, it ran. Thank God. Ah, oh, that feels so good. No, it didn't run. Why are you giving me all kinds of hopes, Vivek? Uh, it didn't run. Okay. Uh, can you do this? Uh, I'm not giving for this. Okay. Okay. I'll go on with the class. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
these are the this is the problem uh just just while i'm taking the class try to give me the answer to this question uh, run this command config list and let me know what you are getting npm config space list please print this and tell me what you are getting okay uh, just paste it as a uh, as a doubt npm config list okay i'll continue with the class so first thing was this install the library vivek has shared that no vishal has joined okay so we were here uh, package was installed package was this so those were the two steps you need to do the last uh, so i have installed package and i will have to do node in it npm in it so npm in it oh, that should work okay package name is using mongoose okay. okay package name should be using mongoose no enter is not working i tried enter enter for node js test from on yes whatever okay now we need to define touch i will not write touch because you will get confused about it i'll define it from here the file is index.js this is the file and now in this file we'll do the second step which is to import mongoose module how do you import mongoose module the code is very simple all you need to do is const mongoose is equal to require mongoose that's it i'll save this uh, i'll go to my command and i'll do const mongoose is equal to require mongoose i'll save this and sir i have deleted no module is that okay uh, you, you should not delete why have you deleted it you should uh, you should keep node module in this folder if it is outside this folder you can delete but if it is inside this folder you should not delete okay hari hari okay so now you require mongoose and now i'm going to run this code what was touch? touch touch just creates an empty file so if i just do touch temp.txt it is going to create an empty file called temp.txt uh it's just it's just a command that was on my hand i was thinking of writing it but then i thought it will confuse some of you and intrigue others so i wrote what would i do the same if import mongodb instead of mongoose uh, it cannot import MongoDB. You cannot import MongoDB in London. It's not a, it's not a node package. You can only import MongoDB. Touch creates a new file. Yes, that's true. Touch creates an empty new file. Uh, sir, what would it, what would it do the same if I import MongoDB? When I, when I'm writing, it suggests me MongoDB. No, it, it might be coming from somewhere else. MongoDB you cannot import. You might be writing somewhere MongoDB, so it is suggesting you. Somewhere here in the schema or this. Okay. So when, when you are writing these files of a schema validation, etc., we are using MongoDB again and again. So it might be suggesting from there. Now I'm going to show you that this import works. So show that all I need to do is note uh, index.js and enter. And if this runs, that means node uh, uh, MongoDB is, oh, sorry, Mongoose is imported. So I'll take a short break now.
uh, because some of you will have to go for dinner we'll take a short break uh, and in the short break i'll try to read more about uh, vivek's problem maybe uh, i'll i'll discuss that after the class vivek okay uh, after the class i'll discuss it with you personally but location cinema Okay. I'll help you out later. Vivek, try to send a screenshot of entire screen. Yeah, that is a good idea. Because your module is not installed. I'll push the code too. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Uh, MKDIR. MKDIR is the uh, make directory is the for mine, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, for you, Nilanjan. Nilanjan, I'm saying to you that make sure you have installed Mongoose. If you have not installed, it will. And you have to install it in the folder. Sir, it ran but showed nothing. That is okay. That is what is expected current. It will show nothing. Okay, let's take a short break right now. Uh, let's come back in 15, 20, 15, 18 minutes. Uh, let's come back at 9.35 so that you can have dinner. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's a, that's good, Nilanjan. <laughs> you are you were at wrong folder. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so break till nine thirty-five. See you at the end of nine thirty-five, uh, and we'll again start get started. With this.
Let's get yeah. Let's get started. I'm back. Yes, I'm back into the class. Vivek, let's connect after the class and discuss your code. Uh, you can just. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is true. But I don't know if that is the problem. I'll have to sit down with him, get his screen share, some kind of a screen share, and then get it, get it done. Hmm. Yes, Nilanjan. Very good. You are back. Okay. Uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to open this. This is how you can import the mongoose. Once you have imported mongoose, the rest of the steps are very simple. First of all, we, we need MongoDB to be running. And the best way to run MongoDB is to just run compass so i'll just run mongodb compass although that is not needed <coughs> uh, run mongodb compass and connect to this local host copy this local host we'll need this and connect it okay and it got connected very good now you can minimize this and now you can come here and the second step is to connect to MongoDB. And here is how you can connect. Mongoose dot connect. Hello. Just write mongoose dot connect. Mongoose you have imported. And there is a command connect command that you can write. Okay, Ratya. And let's see what this command uses. It uses a URI, which is the URL. It is kind of the URL for getting to the mongoose. So you can write, paste this URL, which is mongodb colon colon 27017. And, and what you can do is, if you are connecting to this, and there will be a callback. The callback will be, on the error if this runs there will be a callback which will be in this callback i'll say uh, no voice oh sorry uh, is my voice not audible hello my voice is it should be audible it's fine yes okay thank you yeah so anyways uh, the first is when you have data. When it gets connected, there will be a callback. And in this callback, I can just do console. Console.log. Connected. Connected to. This is one. And the next is when there is an error. In case of an error. You can just do. Uh, you can just do console. Dot log. Error. Colon. Error. Dot message. And you can put it in curly braces, but that's not required. For some reason, I'm hearing a sound. I don't know what that sound is. Anyway, so that's that's all you need to do to connect to mongoose if i save this file 
And if I just go and try to run this, see, it says connected to MongoDB, which is a good thing. Now we are connected to MongoDB. And I'll just turn it over here. See, so we can get connected to MongoDB. Show sure, command again. I'm going to show. I'm going to. Oh, oh, one, one second. I didn't. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't push the changes to GitHub. Let me just push the changes. Uh, so I'm sorry for not pushing the changes. I was. I just forgot it at the last moment. Let it get committed and let me send it across. Uh, how did we connect with MongoDB using this connect command? Yeah, I'm going. To, I'm going to show you the connect command again. And I'll push the changes, and you can see in the GitHub repo as well. It will take some time. The objects are writing. Hang on. And now it is there. Now this is the command. There are three parts to it. I'm going to divide it into three parts. First is the URI. Second is the response. OK, very good, Sakim. Uh, and third is the error. Let's save this. Yeah. Those are the three things you need to connect to Mongoose. MongoDB. Very good. And those of you who got connected, it's good. Uh, Karan, I hope you are also connected now. And then you can just do node index.js to connect. Karan Kora, are you connected? I'll paste this command in our readme.txt. I'll just come here. Connect to no, connect to okay. Connect to connect EB from this one. So instead of using a callback, can we use a promise or async await as well? Ah, uh, you can use that. You can use that if you want. That's OK. Uh, hmm. OK, we can use that. Now, we are going to use a sync of it in a few minutes. Now, the next step would be to create a schema, which we are going to use, which is this step, creating a schema. Let me put some space between these steps. So let me put another space here, another space here. So creating a model involves two steps. One is to create a schema. Let me create a schema for you. Schema is not mandatory. Right? It's not mandatory. It should not be mandatory. So I did, but my compass is showing an error. What is the error your compass showing, Vishwa? Oh, sorry, Vabha. Vabha's compass is showing the error that is common across. Uh, you have to go to services and then restart this service called as MongoDB. You have to restart uh, MongoD service uh, web hub. So go to, uh, so I'll show it to you on my code. Screen sharing. Uh, so first thing is click on, click here and click on this one. Services, click on services. Get the services app, click on services app. And then here you can find something called as 
MongoDB. This one, MongoDB server. Make sure this is running, and if it is not running, it started by by right clicking, and then there is there's a start button. Okay, do that, and it will work. Yes. Okay, Weber. Uh, yes, uh, Weber. Uh, yes, Vivek, you have a doubt. Navneet Malhotra has a doubt. Let me see. It is connected. Yeah, yours yours is connected, Navneet. Is that everything seems to be fine? That is good. Uh, Navneet is fine. Error cannot find found module. Maybe you are making a typo. Did you import it? Uh, yes, uh, Vivek. Once you have uh, no, once you have the mongoose installed, what you can do is you can define you can do define this uh, no index.js file, Vivek. And in this index.js file, you can write these two lines, which are going to connect to Mongo's. Uh, now, what it says is, Navneet is saying, I got the same thing. Cannot found module. Which module did not found, did not find? Which module did you not find? Mongo's or uh, Yes, exactly. Uh, mongoose, mongoose. You have not installed mongoose, uh, Nazmin. You write these two commands. Hello. Write these two commands. Uh, write these two commands. Uh, get into the folder. Install mongoose. Did it? Did you install it inside that folder which you are using it? You have to create a uh, create an index.js file. Nazmin, did you did you uh, do you have this node node modules inside the folder in which you have index.js? Can you share? Uh, can you share with me the image of image? I mean, can you share this image with me index.js and this node module thing? I just want to see. Maybe there is some uh, there is some uh, error in your in in. Uh, in your spelling or something. Other than that, there cannot be error. Now, one thing that you have to do is if something does not work, try to find what is the problem, what is the error you would have made. Don't think that the code is not working because there's some problem with the code. First thing is try to see what most of, many of the times it happens on Windows that uh, you uh, your, your machine is at the fault, but many times the machine is not at fault. Okay, so let's let's look at how to define yeah you can you can start mongo server from uh, compass yeah there's no need to do it explicitly but sometimes it is uh sometimes it is not starting so you have to start it manually yes okay sir once change the port number and run again Port number, why do you want to change the port number? This is the port number I've saved for MongoDB. Why do you want to change it? Nitish, I don't understand. Okay, I'll change it. Let me say six, save it and no doubt. Uh, did it connect to that port? I don't know. It will say Mo MongoDB is not running on that port. It will say timeout or something. Try to see where your MongoDB is. Uh, try to see where your MongoDB is running. Okay, it got connected. You can try. Yeah, if it is getting connected, that is good. If it is getting connected, then it is good. Don't worry about compass then. Okay. Uh, there's no error that I am getting, Nitish. Uh, 
I don't know where the Mongo server is running. So yeah, I'll show my code. No worries. This is the code. You can fetch it from the GitHub as well. Uh, What is the error you are getting, Nitish? Can you share that? And did your would work, Web Hub? Are you getting connected to MongoDB uh, as a code, uh, as a solution? Can you ask, uh, can you confirm that, Web Hub? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Web Hub. So that's how you can connect to Mongoose. I'm going to back, I'm going to make it back to 17 because that's what I have been using. Okay. Now, I need to define a schema. How to connect this mongoose.connect? First, you need to uh, ins do you see the screen right now? Am I sharing the screen? Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. This line here is going to connect you. Uh, to connect for uh, write the following line to connect. Run the following line to connect. Try to read what is in front of you. If you read, uh, ninety-five percent of the problems will go away. You don't have to run here and there uh, without no command. Oh, so, uh, you can just run compass. You can just run, start compass, uh, Vivek. Once you start compass, the MongoDB will run. I don't understand your question. Do you want to unmute yourself? If you write this command, mongoose.connect, you can connect. I don't know. Okay. Okay, now, now uh, I'll just define, uh, let user model. Let me first define a model and then I'll do something. Mongoose.model. And this requires a name. Name is must. So I'll define it as uh, users. So I'll define it as new users. Uh, I don't like this. Let me use something else. Let me use cars. Let me define a uh, collection for cars. Model is a collection. Yes, exactly. Model is a representation of collection. I define a model car. And now, without defining a schema, I can insert something into it. I can do something like parts.create. cards.create and in this I'm going to create a module called as let me just put something so I'll just put name as um, I'll just put brand as this liquid model is a collection I'll say brand as uh, Maruti and let me also define model as model as Swift. Okay. Now this gets created in the model. This gets saved in the model. Now this is a promise. This is a promise. And this requires, if this promise runs through, then you need to do something. You can do console. Console dot log student. You can do data. You can just console dot log data. Oh no, not like this. You can just do console log. Whatever is the result of this gets printed. That's what this means. And there's also a catch. If there is a catch, you can do. Uh, again, you can do console.log 
whatever is the error message that will get printed. So I create this very simple. I'm creating a, a object inside my data model cars. I save this and I go to my running command. I do again run this. And missing a schema error. Okay, you need a schema for this. I, I'll, I'll define a tri trivial schema. I don't. Uh, okay, I'll just do. Um, goose or schema and I'll just define it as an empty schema. Okay, that's that's okay. Uh, I'll save this. I'll run this one more time. Okay, let me define a proper schema then. It is becoming a stricter than the schema. The comma, no, the comma is good. The comma is good. The comma is not the problem. Let me define a schema. Let, oh, sorry, not here, not here, sorry, not here. It should be here, comma schema. Create an empty schema and send it. Now if I run this, yeah, the object gets created. This is the new object. Uh, a duplication warning, Mongo's the script query, a strict query option will be switched back to false by default on Mongo 7. Use Mongo set a strict query false if you want to prepare for this change or Mongo set strict query to, to surpass this warning. That's okay. You don't have to worry about this warning. Uh, Why, what is this v equal to zero? V equal to zero is the it, it just return the it, it just returns what what you see in the show the code ones. Okay, I'm going to show you. V v zero is just uh, the version zero. It also saves the version of the model. Sometimes there is a version that you save uh, or, or along with the document. Okay, so this is uh, this is how you can create a model. You can save something into the model. Now I'm going to save this, and now I'm going to show you something interesting. Rebo, uh, have you seen the code? Can I move forward? Or just look at the code for a few seconds, and then, oh yeah. So this is a very simple concept. I just created a model and saved it. Now I go to Compass and try to see what has happened on the backend. So I just refresh this, and see there should be a car. Oh, if I just refresh this. Databases. Uh, which database I'm using right now? Let me see in Mongoose. Mongoose. Test. So if I just click on test, there is a cars data. Yeah, schema can be empty. That's okay. A schema can be empty, but it should be there. Okay, so if the uh, we are in the cars data set and there's a cars collection. If I click on this, an object gets created. Uh, if I expand it, why is the value not saved? Because it does not know the schema. Without the schema, it will not save the value. It will just save whatever it thinks is the right thing. So now let's define a schema for this. The schema is a simple thing. Uh, there is name, which is a string, and there is model, sorry, brand and model. I'll make it into a new line. Uh, make it into a new name. Uh, this band, uh, which is string. I missed how to add the model. Uh, you can just create, uh, you can define the model with a name, and then you can define a, a schema for it. And then model. Is save this and run this one more time. Is control C this run this one more time. Brand string. Oh, capital S. Sorry. So I just have to do capital S. 
Okay, so now it is running fine. Once I define the schema, it can save it. Without the schema, it doesn't know what it is saving. Okay, so that's another mongoose thing. Mongoose is very particular about a schema. Uh, even its documentation would say something similar to that. So if I just come here and do mongoose, mongoose documentation. Uh, we create a schema, we create a custom document. Uh, no, I want to, what is, what is mongoose? I want the mongoose framework. We write, let's face it, writing MongoDB validation, casting, and business logic boilerplate is done. That's why we wrote Mongoose. Hey, look here, it says a schema based solution to build models for your application data. So, in the description itself, it says I am talking about a schema. So, a schema is kind of a big thing for Mongoose. So, be, be ready to write some schema for your documents. Anyways, ideally, you should not have this, but uh, we can create how can our car creator inside test because test is the db that, that we are using right now can you show the code i'm showing the code right now because test is the db that you are using right now therefore it got created inside test okay uh you can switch db there should be a command to switch db in mongoose let me see what is that command read the docs uh, schemas, models, documents, of document validator, discrimination, a schema, models. connection. I think connection is where it will work. Connection. Uh, promise, prototype promise. There should be something called as DB. Yeah, D DB. And the DB instance. Okay, so it's a property that can set the DB instance that you're looking for. So if I want to connect to a particular DB, uh, I can just go back to this. And in here, while connecting, what is this? Yeah, what is this? Callback, callback, string, two overloads. Uh, there should be an option to database yeah the port and then database so i can decide which database i'm talking about so all i need to do is if i want to say use the what is the database i want to use oh no not at this where is the where is mongoose mongoose campus mongoose campus uh, i can just close this uh, I'll have to connect, sorry, connect and save. Save connection to favorite, no, connect only. And I'll connect to Twitter. So this time I'm going to connect to Twitter and show it to you. So uh, after slash, you can just write Twitter. I is going to connect to the Twitter database, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, let me, how cars created inside test. Cars was created because that was the default data set I had. But if I do Twitter, it will get created inside Twitter as well. Can you show the code, how to change the DB? You can just change like this. I think this will work. Do you in the, um, create a, uh, what is car create here? Car create is, car is a model and create is going to create a document. It is similar to insert. Okay, Nilanjan. Nilanjan. It is going to create an object inside the model. Yes, call it. Okay. So now I'm going to create a connect to Twitter data set and let's see if it runs. We'll see this. Let's see. Now it got uh, it. So there's this new folder and I'm going to go to my database, click on Twitter. First of all, I need to refresh this. Okay, this is already refreshed. Cars is already there and Maruti and Swift is added there. Okay, so that's how you can connect to a particular database.
So anytime you have a doubt, you don't have to remember these things. You can just Google or you can just look at the documentation. Once could you just brief what we did from start, create a connection to create a connection collection and all <laughs> create a connection to create a collection on all yes nilanjan i can just review that in just give me one second more i'll create that uh so this here this step here is what i call as creating the model which is the step number four and step number three and four so uh, i'll just write the code here so up here So, so uh, there, there, there is there, this should be creating a DB if this is not there. So if I can use if I use something like uh, Twitter ID, Twitter right, it should be creating. I don't know, but it should be creating a DB. So if I just control C here and run this, there should be a new database now. Now there is a new database. Now I can show it to you on compass. And how do I know this? How do I intuitively know that there will be this command will go through? Because I know that when I use use in my look, Twitter right is created. So when I use when I use the use command, I know that the database gets created automatically. So I know that if somebody would have implemented mongoose, they could have they would have used that property. Okay. Okay. So you can make these guesses while coding. Ideally, you should not be looking up into Google. You should be making proper guesses about everything. Anyways, uh, I'll go back to Twitter. Uh, and now read me file. This is how you can create a schema. A schema is nothing but a JSON object. And then from that JSON object, you can create the model. And once this is done, I discuss the create model function. Now I'm going to do what Nilanjan has asked me to do, which is to revise everything. I think that's a very good idea. So I'm going to come here and, and then save this. And so these are the five steps that I have been talking about Nilanjan. First step is to install Mongoose. Say yes if you understand this step, installing Mongoose, Nilanjan. Okay. So I'm not going to discuss it. It's just two commands that you need to run. Second step is to define, create a file called as, uh, create a, uh, create an index.js file and add const mongoose, require mongoose. That is going to import mongoose to your file. What is console.log will give in line number 36 and 37. Uh, yeah, console.log. So if you are not able to add, so I'll I'll show you why, how it will not add. Suppose I say I create a uh, I create a schema which is not fitting this. So let me do this like hey, let me say model is not a string but a number. I said this in my schema. And now what I'll do is, uh, I try to uh, I try to add a model where the model is actually a string. If I do this, I should get an error message. Okay, it says car validation failed because I was looking for a string type a string, and what I was uh, I, the type I got was a string, and the type I sent was uh, the type I wanted was number. So this whole message that you're seeing here from this point onwards, uh, where is that point? This point onwards, this whole message, error, cars validation failed, map, cast to number failed to values, shift at path model, okay? Now this whole error is what you are getting in catch. When you catch the error, it is coming here. But if you have a simple case where uh, okay, I, I'm I'm going to remove this. Just give me one second. Oh, okay. Uh, console dot log. Uh, I'll just print error. I'll not print anything else. And console dot log. And here I'm just going to do. Uh, 
uh, just give me one second. I'm, I, I know I made a mistake, success. And here I'm going to create a function out of this. So I'll just do this. Whatever data was there, I'm not worrying about it. And here I'm going to error this. Okay, I define a function out of the error and the data. And I'm not printing that. I'm not printing that, but I'm going to show you how it works. So model is also a string. If model is a string, I save this and I try to run this. We'll see. It says success. That means I was able to add it. But if I just do the same thing uh, with number, number, yeah, exactly. If I look at number, um, it will say error. Error. It says error, which means you, your validation failed. And validation failed even before you were able to connect to MongoDB. You see what is happening here? Uh, Mongoose did not wait for you to connect to MongoDB. As soon as this, it saw that the schema is not correct, it says that there is an error. Do you see that? Yeah, it sticks. Yeah, I, I think that is true. Uh, that is true. I know. In docs, it says Mongoose requires not promises. Just it says Mongo queries are not promises, just then enables. I don't know what that means. Uh, that might be some. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you can think of them as promises. It's here it says that it is a promise. You see, see, promise any. It says a promise. I don't know uh, what document is. Mongoose promises.html. What is that? Let me see. Let me stop. Vijita uh, shared a docs promises. There should be a promises. I can I can also go there. There is promises. Let me search. Promises. Promises.html. These are not promises. It just says these are thenables, which is another. Uh, I don't know what's the name. What's the difference between thenables and promises? So yeah. Okay. Thank you, Arnav. That that is. Good. And one thing I like about you, Arnav, is you are reading the documentation, which is a good thing. Like, if you are reading the documentation, you can obviously pick years. So that's that's mongoose uh swift model maruti and if i look at the latest result here uh, okay uh, not latest result if i look at what is saved here in the twitter data set you will see what i was talking about v uh, uh, underscore v if i do to go to cars and maruti if i refresh this data set first Yeah, another object of Maruti is saved uh, with that. So if yeah, if I if I want to update this model, I can just do once I create it. If there is a create, I don't have to look at the documentation. I can just do cards. Mm, okay, cards dot update one. We can have update one. We need a filter. Filter is same as the filter we have been talking about. And in this filter, I'm going to use, I'm going to use my knowledge here. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to create a filter of object ID. <coughs> so I need this.
need object ID. I somehow need a way to write object ID. So, um, okay, I can do it here. Wait a second. Come on. Yeah. I can say ID colon. Of, uh, is that object ID? It's valid object ID, no. I can do mongoose. Mongoose dot object. Type. Schema types dot object types object id uh, this is object id and this uh, what is this Just give me one second. Um, okay, let me use pipes. Okay. Uh, is background noise coming? Let me check. Sorry. Uh, no, it should not be coming. I'm I'm singing. Uh, there are some people. Uh, my brother just walked past by. So that might be there. It usually is not. There's usually no background noise. And then you can come here and just write this code. Now, this is the filter that you are creating. What is the error? Let me remove this. What is the error here? Okay, there is an enter. Enter should not be there. So, this is the object ID that I'm looking at. And for this object ID, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, let me check what is this. This takes, uh, this is update one. Uh, this takes a filter and this takes an update, which is maybe, a, a, which is basically what you want to update. And here I can do something very similar to what I have done with MongoDB. So uh, I can just do brand as auto, so brand as body. And if I just save this, uh, I don't like this in the same line. I'll just this. I save this and I see if I can run this. Is this clear? Yeah. No, this this is not correct. Uh, I need a way to create object ID. Mm -hmm. Let's go to documentation. And click on object ID. Uh. Okay. So you can just do a schema type or uh, new schema object ID. But what what if I want to create a new object ID? Uh, new schema constructor no schema type schema type no. Now it is paused. Just give it a few seconds. My computer is slow. No, this is not how Mongoose does it.
Oh, you'll have to get MongoDB for that. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, come on. Mongo stop types dot object ID. That might work. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Uh, just come. Just let me. Yes. Console. Console dot log. dot types dot object ID. Let's say paste this, save it, and try to run this. Success. Where is the console coming up? Console is not. Okay, it's it printed. Yeah, that is good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Abhijit. That is the right solution. Thanks a lot. Okay, so now I'll have this. I have this control C this and I can I'll just save it in some let ID is equal to mongoose type object and then I can just do update one and here I can just do mongoose dot types Save this and I I need uh I also need a way uh, since this is a promise then I can do then uh, then console console dot log catch console dot log this is good I save this and I just control see this and I run this okay so that's how uh, it runs. It updated, modified count this one, inserted ID is null, match count was one. This is, you remember, do you remember this message from somewhere? Do you remember where you have seen? Why use then? Because it's a promise, Suraj. You remember promise? This is from Mongo Shell. Yeah, this Mongo Shell also gave the same result. Now, if I give you, uh, if I go take you to the mongoose directory and i just refresh this uh, cancel this let me refresh this audi is updated here okay i'm not sure what is v uh, what is v I can save the versions. So I, I, I remember distinctly that we used to save some kind of versions, but repeat then again, then. Okay, then is something. So Suraj, let me explain it to you. You remember I talked about promises some time back where a function, uh, so you, you understand what callbacks are, Suraj? So callbacks are something which happens once a function is running and it's a asynchronous function it returns some values and you want to run a run a callback on that function once it returns for example here once you connect to mongodb make sure you print this message connected to mongodb so that's a callback but it's it's difficult to manage callbacks all the time and it's not it's not clear what will happen next in our code when you we write callbacks uh, easier way would be to use than uh, it easier way would be to use promises in promises something similar to callbacks happen but we simply have a function which returns a promise and when the function returns a promise the callback function is written inside the then clause so you know what is going to happen after create exactly and then you can list up bunch of uh, you can pipe bunch of then clauses after uh, then clauses after after the uh, this then uh, this one after this then you can bunch uh, write bunch of then clauses and then you can know what is happening in your code okay that's what then clauses are for this code is this function is going to be called once I return
yeah that that's what i uh, uh that is what i was thinking like it that is exactly what i was thinking but my problem was when i update one when i run this command update one for example if i do up uh, audio two and i just control c this and i just run this one more time this says that it has updated modified count is one if i go back to my uh, compass and i refresh the data audi becomes two but the version is still zero yeah we need to increment p that is true we have to do it manually i guess or we just write a flag for that in this yeah now i got it after every operation that is create update delete we need to add then and cash yes nilanjan or you can do async of it or you can uh, or you, you can just do async await for this i'll show you how to do it using async await just give me a few seconds so that's how all the commands that i have discussed with you previously have their parallels in so all the things that i have discussed with you the reason why i spent so much time discussing all those things in three separate classes was i don't want to discuss all of that right now right now i hope this is my hope then once i once i teach you how to do create and update fund you can do update many you can search you can do also all sorts of things with the data can i believe that because you have the data for uh, cli you can translate that into mongoose easily okay nested scheme i'm going to touch on that why do we need a async await here because we don't want to deal with because we don't want to deal with promises okay we don't want to get into the promise hell so we can use await async await you remember async await we you can run promises inside functions which are async functions yeah you can use both but you can you can write better code with async await yeah i can push the code to github that's yeah i'm going to repeat that that is okay vishal first let me push the code updated uh, this is uh, what is this created created Hmm, let me push this. Hmm. Yeah. So ID thing is very simple. I went to my compass and I copied this ID of Audi2. This ID from here. Okay. Then I come back to this folder and I said I want an object object ID of this string. The same string that I copied from there. I come here and I pasted it. Once I paste that string, I got the same ID. Once I have the ID, I can get uh, update one is just a filter operator. It has a bunch of parts, but if I click on this, you can see it has a filter read after the second line in this uh, data. It has a filter and an update option, and then it has options. And now I don't know what goes inside update. I, I, I don't, I have not read the documentation for Mongoose. I don't know what goes inside these, but I know what happens on CLI. And uh, my guess is, if somebody is writing the doc, if somebody is writing the mongoose uh, uh, library, he will use the same terminology as much as possible for mongoose as that is for MongoDB. They are not going to deviate from the terminology a lot, and that is a perfectly valid guess. Why would you do that? Okay, if there is no uh, uh, yeah, CLI, a CLI is the mongoose shell that we are talking about. You know, we, we used to write uh, in mongoose shell commands here. You remember update one command that we have written some time back away. Yeah. So uh, we are not going to deviate much from those commands and I can easily use similar commands here as well. So that's what, uh, 
that that's what this is about now 63a is already an id why to do uh, because uh, because i want to get that specific object i want to update that specific object like it uh, i want to update a particular object in a, in my database therefore i am using the id there okay like it we are getting complete object in id no we are getting an id we are just getting an id it's is just a type i mean i can print this i can print the object or uh, id and it's just uh, the the thing that goes to the back end is just a string and that is interpreted as an id so it's a data type in as such and the object is stored in this data type is this so you think of it like a string but something something like an envelope string something like a letter inside a uh, inside a envelope okay this is the letter which is a string and this is the envelope on top of it nothing else okay so i think this is a time how to write async and await i'm going to do that i'm going to show you how to write async and await uh, but before that what is data in line 16 data is whatever is returned from the whatever is returned from creating this uh, creating uh, this object this document whatever i get is uh, whatever i get after creating this object is the data sir one thing uh, how to increment v suppose if a client wants to update his info how he going to do that so every kind client will have an object id or there will be a primary key for a client which will be either the client id or something and once we have the client id our client will say please update me we will know what is the update and then we'll pass along that update to the db so there will be a three step process okay sure uh how to increment v uh that is a good question there should be some command for that uh, let me see let me check uh query option mongoose callback update aggregate pipeline how to query uh one way is just to do okay let me do that like it as a solution let me see if it's correct uh, let uh, okay let update is equal to r and then uh, let uh, i can just do update dot v i'm not sure for that uh, i'm not sure of that because uh, okay, i have to do it afterwards just give me one second so i'll just control x this and i'll just do me error update save this let me see if this runs yeah okay so now let me see if it is running in the Uh, refresh this no it's not running that is not running v is still the same oh it should be underscore v okay uh just give me one second underscore v save it and let me run this hmm. let me go to the this one and double underscore um, no let's see okay if i if i have to do double underscore i can always do it inside the okay let me do it. Uh, this one let's see no chairs and let's see uh, no it's not getting updated am i checking the right data cancel 
refresh. No, that's not how you update the version. And there should be, uh, my guess is there should be a valid way. Uh, there should be an inbuilt way of updating the version, which is very simple. You can just come here and underscore underscore v, switch for it. Come on. My computer has stopped responding. Just give it a few seconds. Am I opening some very uh, huge file on my computer? Mm, yeah. What is there? Search. Come on. Just give it a few seconds. Am I running a software? No, I'm not running any antivirus. Yeah, no, it is running. Okay, look up instance schema. Come on. Hmm. There might be somebody saying something. Double underscore is also not working. So that's not. There should be a simple option of saving it. Uh, when I say create, I should have an option of updating it automatically. To index false. Index method. Mm -hmm. so not That is that is a good idea, Likit. I like Likit's idea better. Um, anyways, so you can just do. Um, so we colon. Not this one. Two dollar increment. Underscore underscore v by one. And this should do. I don't have to do this. Save this. I see this and this. Okay, this is running. Now I again have to open compass. Compass. MongoDB compass. Hmm, connect again. Connect again and go to Twitter database. Cars. And now it is increment. Yeah, you have to write this. 
that is a that is that is the best solution i can think right now and now they don't need it uh, you, they don't need to define another uh, they don't need a parameter for it sorry i should have thought of that but likhit has done yeah okay so i have a few minutes left and i want to discuss one of the things that students have been there are two things that i want to discuss right now one is okay that is good that is good likhit uh and there are two things that i want to talk about right now one is this nested schema i want to spend some more time on schemas so i'll just cut this from here full steps full x yeah and i'll define a schema with this let car the schema is equal to whatever schema i have defined this is one way of defining a schema okay and this i can write car schema and the code will run as well as what i was thinking it will it will run as it is there's no difference but now i can do something more interesting i can define another schema let engine a schema be mongoose or a schema and then i can define something like a horse power a horse power as a number okay and i can define something as cylinder capacity i'll just write it cc uh, as also a number okay so i define these two things and now i can do something very clever i can come here and i can write engine as something as engine as having the schema of itself so i can write engine schema you see what i'm doing i can have a nested schema a schema inside a schema now my car object is it possible so so is this possible this way yeah this is possible now my car object should have model brand model and then it should have a engine engine which has which is also an object which has hertz power equal to say 700 and cc equal to 1500 okay Making it embedded. That is correct. Engine should be embedded in this. And uh, I'll I'll write it in the next line. This is my engine. Let me write the whole object properly. First, I have brand. Second, I have model. And third, I have engine. I don't want these to be in quotes, so I'll remove the quotes. Uh, everyone knows that key is going to be a string, so they. think of it as a string they, they you don't have to write as uh, code you don't have to write codes for it okay so create is there and then you can have then in the next line and catch in the next line okay now if i save this and if i run this we'll see yeah it is success is you have added the document and if i now go in this uh if i go into the document my shift uh, od2 should have become 3 or 2 and there should be another object this one with engine as an object where engine has a horsepower a cc an object id of its own okay this is how you can make things embed so this is called as embedded schema okay you can have that's great in that way you can add more details yes that is true nilanjan you can have more details you can have more power over ekta kumari has a doubt car sensor buffering time out of time so uh, are you connected to cars 
so uh, uh, okay insert one you have to pression insert did you send some kind of uh, data for this ekta what did you send for insert one i don't think insert one is an operation let me see if insert one is i think create is there but insert one seems to be a not name which should not be there bulk write is there there is nothing called as insert one what you need to do is you need to create okay uh what are you doing what what are you inserting can you can you uh, paste the whole screenshot okay custom validator uh, let me see what she is doing okay let me let me have it without engine let me just control x this as this where am i saving maruti swift again and again okay here i am saving it again and again no worries uh, you can you can corrupt you can do all these things with the uh, with the dev development data so uh, you will typically have a yeah what's custom validator custom validation is how do you want to validate it uh, whatever validation i have written here is what custom validation is about okay nilanjan no there is no disadvantage uh, just give me please help me with this doubt okay let me i'll come to you just give me one second okay okay so uh, So, so how to stop that repeat object creation while running server again and again uh, i you can delete the object later uh, so what you can do is you can create a new database or you can delete the database every time you are running it so that's one thing uh, you are connecting your search schema is this which is okay uh, this is okay car schema is okay uh can you run it again uh, ekta the the thing that i am seeing here is your connection to mongo db is taking a lot of time there is no problem with uh, your create logic the connection to but to stop an object from creating again and again what you can do is uh, you can delete the objects once they are there okay or you can create a tag for that Yes. Yes, Ekta. That is right, Arnav. Arnav is correct. Uh, your uh, um, your MongoDB is not connected for ten seconds, and therefore the create one timed out. Okay, Ekta. Try to see if MongoDB is getting connected properly, or try to see if there are too many connections to MongoDB. Oh. Uh, i think we are not closing the connection that might be a problem uh, we need to close the connection there might be too many collections running or you might not be closing the connection properly okay what are you using to end the program that you are running ekta uh, ekta what are you using to end the program are you using control c or you are using something else control c only okay then that should not be a problem 
no i'm asking what's that okay custom validator that's a good point uh, what you can have is something like a custom validator in your create function and um, so it's it's in the valid yeah that that's a good idea ekta okay so what you can do is you can have validators inside of your code so a schema here is not same as the schema as the, i mean it's more powerful than the schema that you have in mongo uh, you remember i was talking about this in mongo db that the schema is not actually as powerful as i want it to be you remember that do you remember i talked about this sometime abhiji the schema that we design in mongo db is not as powerful as we want it to be uh, here the schema can be more powerful i can do something like this i can have model uh i can have a model which is type string and validate validate is this one value data is whatever string you have its string dot length should be greater than 5 whatever string you are saving here should be of length 5 more than 5 okay and you can have or you can say uh, either your string should be less, greater than 5 now you can have a validator built built with programming logic these are not def these are not descriptive validators these are uh, program programmable validators you can write a function that is going to validate it okay if this validation fails if this validation fails you can have props our props you come uh you can just do dollar Uh, no, sorry. Dollar props. Props. Not value. And you can say uh, model name is too short. Ah, uh, now I'm going to I'm going to show it to you. So I'm going to create a model name which is smaller. uh so let's say equal to and here i'm going to print the data so i'm going to print the data and i'm also going to print the error okay i'll save this uh there's some problem with this oh this should be forward tick not this one this is good i save this and i'm going to run it uh, we'll see this okay car validation failed and why is the validation failed all to na model name is too short you see here all to model name is too short i can write logic i can write for conditions for loops i can write while loops i can write if conditions inside of a validator it's simply a function okay and that makes it very powerful altos it will work Right, call to us. Uh, it will work. Okay. What is the car validation field? Why is this? Oh, this should be greater than five, so it should not be actually equal to. So this is equal to five. Call to us. I'll add some asses. I'll just come here and save it again. And it created an object with call to us as the model name. Okay. Thank you, Avijit, for bringing that up. so that's how you can deal with mongoose from uh, node js mongo db from node js can't it be done inside a schema it can be done it can be done uh, i can show you the code with async just give me one second let me write uh, and i'll show it to you for a search query so 
Uh, I just do const search is equal to a function that takes. Uh, it can be done, but you cannot write for loops inside. Uh, I, you cannot write for loops inside the schema, RBG. Okay, that's what I was saying. It's not as descriptive as this. You can obviously do a string length greater than five, but that is just a property that you can save. But here, what you can do is you can write uh, hundreds of lines of code for validator. Yeah. So ID. Uh, uh, so this should be a sync function. So I'll just write as a sync. If we have model uh, type string color string, we need validator for both of them. And how to use props.val. Props.val is not a uh, props.val is just a message. Whatever message you want to use, or what so this is model, and model will have multiple validators for them. So for both of them, type and color, you can have one. Uh, one object like this okay uh, lick it uh, so this will be inside another object and then what you will have is you'll have type type and type is going to have its own object which will have type as a string i don't like type word but uh, you can maybe write it as fine uh, is a type of a string and validate is whatever validator you want. Similarly, you will have a validator for color. Okay. We'll have a validator where type is a string and validate as something like this. Okay. Or maybe you can write it, write all this inside a schema. That's what I was coming to. You can write it inside a schema of its own and just write model schema here. Okay. Model schema. And then model schema will have those two things written together. Uh, I think uh, I think nesting is not good. Having a too deep nest is not good. A uh, better idea is always to use uh, a nested schema instead of nesting too many things into a single file. Okay. Uh, 19 uh, all the time all the time use a name instead of using uh so in if you have an engine don't don't unnecessarily which is which is not good uh, unnecessarily opening it up will not be a good idea avijit okay uh it's a good idea to use uh these naming conventions this is better the one that i was that i was writing before was not that good okay avijit does that answer you lick it? Yeah. Not as uh, yeah. yeah. I mean it it is as powerful. Uh I don't I don't think you need I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, a single line logic. Yeah. Uh I don't know what that means as powerful. What what you mean by powerful? So yeah. Nested schema is more powerful. I mean, it's equally powerful as uh, validator. Uh, no, uh, okay, okay, got got your point. Aviji, nested schema and validator are both uh, both parts of this. Uh, both are two different tools. You can have both of them together. You can have nested schema and you can have validator. You can have a validator inside a nested schema. For example, I can come here, Aviji, and have a uh, a validator for my horsepower or for my uh, engine schema. My horsepower can be greater than can only be greater than 500. Okay, so I can have uh, I can have validator and nested schema mixed up. That's okay. Okay, so now let's talk about search. Search is an async function that takes an ID and like every async function, it try try once 
car. No, I don't want to call it a car. My car has a weight. It's two uh, cars dot find a find function and this find function uh, mongoose query find by id uh, find one find one okay and find one can have a filter and in this filter i'm going to send a simple filter which is id is id okay and that's my car that's my car is returned you can just do console dot log my car okay and I'll catch error if there is an error you can do console dot log error Okay. And that's your search function. Now I can search for a given object ID. I'll just uh, I'll search for this ID only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do search and I'm going to send ID, which is what I've saved here, and then and do console. I can just send this. This is not returning anything, so I'll just write it like this. And I'll just do console. Uh, and I'll just save it like this. Uh, this should work. If I run this, what is already running? So I'll stop this first. I'll see. And I'll just write it. So now, this Alto's Maruti is there. Okay. This is what I was looking for, Raviji, and I got it. No, this was the, this was the object, Audi 2 with Swift uh, as the number and version 6. Does that make sense? Are you able to see? So, sir, for coding search function, can't we use sync instead of promise? That's what I'm. Uh, Oh, you want you want to use uh, await for this also? Uh, uh, I don't know how to use await for calling. Uh, for calling, I don't know how to use await. Let me see if I can use it. Let's see, I've never used await like this, but it should ideally be working. Uh, no, await only works in a sync function. No, no, that's not gonna work. No, that's not gonna work. Await is only valid in async function, the top level boundary bodies of and the top level bodies of modules. So you cannot directly write it outside somewhere and you think uh, it will work. Okay, so you don't write it here. Write it inside a proper function. And uh, at the top level, always use a promise. That's a good idea. Okay, uh, that's it. I'll just control that. Uh, I'll save it. I think, yeah, I'm going to ch push the changes. Thanks for reminding me that, Hari Arun. Uh, I'm going to push it in front of completed. The class. I'll commit this domain. I'll show this. Okay, students, that's it for today. I have overrun by five minutes. I'm sorry for that. I will try not to do it next time. And thank you all for coming. I hope you have enjoyed the session. I hope you are learning how to learn these uh, these how to learn these uh, technologies. It's it's much more important to yeah. Uh, uh, it's much more important to know how to learn these technologies rather than just learn a particular. Could you please code once? Could you? Could you please share the code once? Show the code once. Okay, I'll show. I've closed it, but I'll show it once. Uh, you can take it from the GitHub repo as well. Okay. Nilanjan.
Is this okay? Got it. Okay. Thanks, Nilanjan. Bye, everyone. That's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed the class. Bye. Good night. Thanks.